if I find something that I love and that catches my eye, I might buy it. But for now, this is what I intend to add to my garden this year. Hi everyone and welcome back to the Southerners Northern Garden. So this is an exciting video I've been waiting to record for about over a month now when stuff just got delayed and the weather was bad. And so I decided since plants were coming in in a couple weeks uh, to push the video back a couple uh, more weeks and create a video where I can actually show you some of the plants that are going to be in this. So this year uh, I'm going to be adding a lot of perennials to my garden. Uh, you may remember a video I shot last year and it was kind of a war on perennials and I think it was hot and the perennials were just like doing their summer lull and I had just had it. And so come around a little bit and I'm creating a perennial cottagey type border on the south uh, side fence of my garden which I've explained to you in a lot of recent videos and so most of the plants I'm going over today are perennials there are a few shrubs which I've ordered from great garden plants here uh, and I will go over those as well but I just want to jump right into it because there are a lot of plants this is a small picture of what they look like and there are a lot of beautiful colors that are in my color palette and some of these plants you've probably seen in my garden before a lot of the plants are new to me and my garden and you'll be surprised to find that there's not a single hydrangea. Uh, the only hydrangea that I might be planting this year is an oak leaf hydrangea if I can find a larger specimen locally which I should be able to um, maybe in the next month or so. Uh, I have enough other hydrangeas right now that I want to do some diversification of plantings in my garden. So we're going to try and limit the hydrangeas that get planted from here forward in the garden and focus on some other good drought tolerant type things. And so let's just get started with the clematises. And so I ordered a couple clematises uh, from Brushwood Nursery, which is a nursery in Georgia. They actually arrived today, and this is them. So brushwood, I discovered courtesy of Aaron from the Impatient Gardener, and they grow their clematis in like one gallon nice containers, and they package them to ship them and remove the container. So that container doesn't end back up in the landfill, but cl for clematis, the most important thing are obviously the roots, and so these have very, very healthy roots. You can't see it on camera. I'll try and take a picture and sh flash one on the screen of what these roots look like, but I'm going to try and get these planted tomorrow since they just arrived today, and so there's two of them. One is called Arabella bush clematis. It's kind of similar to the standby me clematis that I have in front of the incredible hydrangea hedge that I'm going to be moving elsewhere in the garden this year because it doesn't get enough sun to perform great right there. The second one is Josephine climbing clematis. Uh, Josephine is a gorgeous pink clematis and this is the one that I'm going to be adding I think onto the arbor uh, the fence arbor coming through the side of the house where I planted the impressionist roses in a couple videos ago and so this will provide some beautiful massive pink blooms uh, at times when the rose may not quite have flushed out yet uh, and during the summer and just inter intermingle beautifully, I think, with that rose. And now I want to move into just the regular perennials. Um, there are a lot of them, and so this is the majority of this video. And the first one is Ajuga Blueberry Muffin. I have one other Ajuga in my garden, and I love the way it's spreading. Now, Ajuga does spread pretty significantly, so I'm going to use this as a ground cover type of um, plant for me in a sunny location. And Ajuga just has these really beautiful blue flowers uh, in the spring, early spring, early summer. And so Ajuga is a ground cover. Understand that if you want to add it into your garden. Uh, it can be maintained and controlled. You have to stay on it just like any other ground cover that can be kind of aggressive. Uh, but this is a decision that I'm making to cover some ground in my garden. Some people don't like it because it is, they consider it a little invasive because it is kind of quickly covering, um, but I will appreciate that so I don't have to mulch in those areas that I put it in. The second perennial is Serendipity Allium 
by Proven Winners. I've had this one in my garden uh, last year. I've not actually got a bloom on it yet. They're the ones I planted along the path of the Moongate Arch uh, last fall. So I got them in late fall and got them planted in October or September, I believe. And so I haven't got blooms from Serendipity in my garden, but I do have a similar one called Millennium. Uh, Serendipity is supposed to have a little bluer foliage. Similar habit though. The next one is an Ameria called Bloodstone, and it is a beautiful pink flower. It's not a plant that I have seen very often around here until I started looking for it, and then I found it at Lowe's at, in several different varieties. Um, this past week when I went and visited Lowe's. And so this specific one's just called Bloodstone uh, and it is a beautiful pink bloom. I think that will be a nice under underplanting in my perennial garden that I'm setting up this year. Then we have a Virginia called Secura. Uh, and this is one that I will be getting probably late May. So it'll come around a little later and it's kind of a shade, part shade plant. And I'm actually going to be putting it in front of the incredible hydrangea hedge after I move out those daylilies I talked about last year. And so those daylilies, I've decided to almost remove all of them and plant them elsewhere in the garden. And that way that will give me some space that those daylilies can perform elsewhere in the sun that they want. And I can add some nice ferny uh, part shade plants on that side because that is the north side of my garden. And there are, um, quite a lot of shade in the afternoon until it gets evening and then it gets a lot of sun. So this part shade plant should be pretty happy over there, especially now that I'm adding these other trees here, these oaks that will provide even more shade to that side of the house later when they grow up a little more. The next one is Calamintha nepeta. Uh, this is a kind of like a cat mint that you've seen in my garden before. Uh, it's a nepeta but it's white. It blooms white and it blooms all season. And so these are really beautiful in drifts. And so I'm going to be tucking some here and there just to kind of intermingle with some other plantings, potentially around the oh so easy double pink roses that I planted last year in between those. And so the roses will flush and we'll have that pink or have that white calamintha around them as well. So I'm going to be getting several of those and I'm just going to tuck them in here and there and see how I like them. And if I like them, uh, I will add more to my garden in the future. But cat mint type varieties, Nepeta, are great additions to your garden because they just perform uh, all summer typically in my zone anyway. I'm also adding a Carex called Evergold, which I added to a container last year uh, as a shade plant on my front porch and I really loved it. And so that is one of the perennials I'm going to be adding to the north side garden here along with some of these other shade ones I'm going to discuss briefly. Uh, it's a smaller grassy type perennial that just looks really beautiful and provides a nice pop in a shady location. The next plant is Dianthus Classic Coral. You know, I love those coral colors in the garden, um, also peachy colors. And so a lot of these plants are gonna have uh, pinks, purples, uh, peachy colors, and yellows. And so Classic Coral, uh, I spotted it at a garden center last year. And I, Dianthus is not my favorite plant. And so we're gonna see uh, how it fares in my garden, how much I like it. Um, they are beautiful when they bloom, but after that, they can look a little ratty to me. Um, so we're just gonna see how this one performs. And if it does a really good job, I'm gonna tuck it as an understory type plant in the perennial border and somewhere else around the garden. So we'll just see if I like it. If I not, it may have to come out and substitute it with something else, but I think it's a beautiful color and provides some really interesting interest that's ne not necessarily blooming interest in the summer. The next one is Dicentra Pink Diamonds. And so Dicentra, you may be familiar with uh, Bleeding Heart. This is a bleeding heart that's a fern leaf bleeding heart and can take more sun. In fact, it loves sun and it's one that'll be going in my perennial border uh, to the side here. So it will bloom all summer. You know, typical bleeding hearts bloom in the spring and then they die off when it starts getting warm and then come back the following year. This one will bloom continuously all spring. Also not a really tall plant and so it also be one of those that I could edge the border with. They're putting pockets around the garden that'll look really nice. Kind of drought tolerant as well. And now we're going to get into some echinaceas. And so one of the things I mentioned last year on my channel uh, that I was going to start focusing on some more drought tolerant plants because I have an extensive drip irrigation system. Uh, but to the extent I'm adding anything else to my garden, I'm going to carefully select plants that I can that are 
drought tolerant so they don't necessarily need drip irrigation in my garden since I do have a overhead sprinkler that waters some of the flower beds along with drip. Anything that I don't actually have to add extra drip to is going to be great. So this next category of plants are echinaceas and it's probably the biggest selection of perennials that I'm adding to my garden. And the first one is called Lovely Lolly and it is a lollipop shaped echinacea and this beautiful beautiful pink uh, delicate pink almost it's really bright though and so i think it's going to be really nice tucked away along some of the other perennials that i've showed you so far and then there's a next one called one in a melon and this is a new introduction by proven winners this year and it has really really large yellow flowers it's a pale yellow it's kind of more like gold yellow and then they pale a little more to like a softer melon yellow color which they look really beautiful in the photos and I can't wait till they arrive so I can stick some of those in the garden. The next one is called Meadow Mama and it is right up my color alley. Uh, it has white uh, type ends to its petals and it is a beautiful shade of peachy, coral, orange, pink. All of those things are in my color wheel and it's gonna be a nice introduction to the garden. Along with that is a similar one called Sunseeker Rainbow. And this is an interesting echinacea because the colors kind of change throughout the bloom life. So it can start out one color and change to another one throughout its bloom cycle before it ends up deadheaded. And then I'm adding a few white things to my garden, as I've mentioned. So the Calamantha was one, uh, just because I think white complements a lot of the colors that I have in my garden anyway, and it's a nice plant. White anything is a nice plant to add. It's a pop of color to your garden. So there's one called, there's an echinacea called White Perfection, and I will show you a picture of the bloom on the screen here. And just by looking at the plant, you can tell that it is definitely white perfection. The bloom is so perfect looking uh, and crisp. It's a very nice white, and so I'm really, excited for that one to arrive. I think I'll be getting those shipments in a two or three weeks and so it'll be a one it'll be a later one that I'm getting in um, and so it'll be part of the planned border that I'm doing on the south side of the house here. Got a couple ferns. Um, one is called Crested Surf which I already have in my garden. Uh, they haven't performed great for me. Um, I think it's because they just it's too dry where they're at and they need a little more water. And so I'm gonna be planting some more on the north side of the house where it stays a little wetter uh, and it gets more shade than the ones I'm currently giving them. These won't arrive until probably July. And so I will probably pot them up and grow them on and pl plant them in fall. And so I'm gonna have to leave gaps in the north side garden uh, until those arrive. And the second one is called Lady in Red. And this is a fern. It reminds me kind of like a Boston fern, but it's very upright and it's a perennial fern for the garden. I'm going to try and add it into some containers on the back porch, uh, but I'm really excited about the uprightness and having ferns in my garden. Ferns is something that I love, uh, that I don't have a lot of that type texture in the garden. And so I'm looking into that this year. And so those are the two ferns I'm going to be adding to my garden. I'm going to be adding a GM. Uh, which is a plant that's not quite as popular um, or not, you can't find them as easily, but there's been some breeding here recently that create some really interesting colors. And one of them is called Pretty Coats Peach, kind of a take on petticoats because the blooms are really frilly. And it's also just that perfect combination of pink, yellows, and oranges that I love. And so obviously that one had to make it into the garden and I have quite a lot of them. Uh, I actually got plugs from Terra Nova Nursery that I purchased and they're tiny and so I probably will not get blooms on them this year. My other GMs that I have in my garden are actually about to start blooming. And so this will be a perennial I tuck in um, around the garden this year that hopefully I can get some nice blooms off next year. There's a Gara coming called Crimson Butterflies. I have grown Gara from seed that grows really well from seed in my garden, uh, but that was the white variety. And I really love Gara, Gara because it performs really great in my garden. It blooms all summer constantly, and it's a nice texture to interplant with other plants. It just kind of blows and drifts in the wind. And so this one's just a really bright pink uh, that I don't have elsewhere in my garden. So I'm gonna add that tuck it here and there in the perennial border and along the south side of my house because I do really like sun. I'm also thinking about adding it to 
uh, around my mailbox planting and replacing the lavender that I have there because I did have one plant that did not survive last year and I just kept it as is. But I think the gara would be really lovely in that location and be really flowy and not need a whole lot of water. So it's pretty drought tolerant. The next plant is a perennial called Hakanacloa or Hakanacloa All Gold. And it's also a shade plant that will be going on the north side of the garden. It's also called Japanese forest grass. And Japanese forest grass is like the most graceful grass that you can have in your garden in my opinion um, and so i've got a couple of them already in the garden that i put in a couple years ago it's not done great at um, perennializing very well so it comes back but it's kind of like kind of thin and so i think it does not necessarily love the clay soil that i have it in but i'm going to try it in some other locations in the garden to see if i can get it to take off because when it does take off it is just magical and so that's one of the grasses shade grasses that i'll be adding to the northern side along the incredible hydrangea hedge the next group of plants are hookera uh, i mentioned in a prior video um, earlier in March, maybe, or February, that I had abandoned my Hookera project. Um, that was mostly because I couldn't get the plants from Terra Nova that I wanted. Uh, but Terra Nova came through and I was able to order and buy the ones that, a lot of the ones that I wanted anyway. Some of them were sold out. And so this is them right here. They're plugs. And so this is kind of, um, mix match right now because I've already potted some of them up to grow on so that the hookera project will probably be a later May project because I want to give these uh, hookera time to get a stronger root system before I plant them out. Planting plugs out like this before summer is not a good idea and so I was able to get these plugs from Terra Nova um, through my business account and so I'm really excited about it. I also picked up, since I couldn't get all the ones I wanted from Terra Nova, uh, a few from Proven Winners. One of them is called Apple Twist, which I had, I believe, in a container, a shade container on my front porch last year. Beautiful, frilly, uh, like green, yellow, orange. The new growth is orange on it. And so it's a beautiful hookera, and it will go along here under the oaks that I put in last year, along with one called Black Pearl, which I've also had and you've probably seen extensively. It is one of the darkest uh, hookeras available. And it is also by Proven Winners. I have one, um, I have two. I had one in a container last year that did really well. And I also have one in the front under the little magnolia that I have. Uh, and it is just an awesome contrasting foliage. And I'm going to combine it with these that I have here and make an interesting um, color palette on the side of the house here. The next one is called Forever Purple. And although I have pictures on the screen, that's this one right here that's kind of in the center of this uh, plug tray right here. And then there's another one called Forever Red. Uh, these Forever varieties from Terra Nova tend to hold their color really well. Uh, some of these colored hookra can throughout the season, lose, pale out a little bit. Their leaves turn a little more paler, but these are supposed to hold their color really well. So it'll be a nice uh, dark purple and dark like fire engine red for the garden. And the last one, or there may be two more, one's called Lemon Supreme, which is this one right here as well. And it's supposed to be a sun tolerant uh, yellow hookrow, which is kind of hard to find. So since this is gonna be a, a sun bed, basically uh, steel, it may, provide a little shade the oaks when they grow up but uh, I needed a yellow hookra for some pop of color that would also take good sun and so that one's supposed to be full sun and I'm hoping it does well in that location and the next one is called northern exposure lime and so Terra Nova also has this collection of hookra called the northern exposure line and they're just supposed to do really well in like our our zone, um, our climate. And so this one will be contrasting a little bit with the yellow. And so there'll be a limey color and a yellow color, purple, red, black, and then the apple twist. And so there's going to be like, what is that? Five or six different colors of hookra that will just line and be intermingled with each other under these oaks next to me here. The next one, now that we're done with the hookra, is one is a nepeta called Cat's Pajamas that I've had in my garden before. I really love Cat's Pajamas. It is a smaller nepeta, so if you want to tuck it into your garden somewhere, 
it provides it blooms for me all summer long non-stop you can share it back if you want to some years i do some years i don't but it still blooms for me all season and so i had to put more of those in my garden nepeta is a really hardy plant and if you struggle with lavender uh, nepeta might be a good alternative for you for a similar similar color palette uh, that blooms a really long time. I've ordered an oregano called Kent's Beauty. This oregano is more like an ornamental oregano and it kind of can be a speller in containers. And so that's what I'm gonna use it for this year is a kind of like an annual. I may put it um, in some containers to perennialize, but the intent for this one was to be a spilling annual for me. The next one is a perennial grass called Lemon Squeeze, which is this one right here. You can see it's just a lemony uh, chartreuse grass that I'm going to place next to my uh, Blue Arrow Juniper that I picked up and showed you in a previous video. It's a smaller grass, so it doesn't get really large, but I think it'll be a nice texture and color contrast to that Blue Arrow Juniper. The next plant is one that Terra Nova sent me a few samples of uh, with, my, with the rest of my order, and it's called a Rogersia Bronze Peacock, uh, and it is a beautiful plant that I'm not sure that I've seen sold around here or I've not really looked for it but in the spring the leaves turn a beautiful bronze color it can be a kind of a tall perennial uh, with its bloom scapes but when it's not in bloom it's a probably a mid-size height perennial and so it blooms a beautiful pink it'll be one that i may tuck on the north side of the garden here uh, along the incredible hydrangea hedge as well just because it'll provide some nice color in the spring and also some nice blooms my understanding is they can take a little bit to get established and so hopefully they will survive the next plant in my garden is salvia perfect perfusion and so I have a few salvias in my garden. I've had salvias in my garden before that got removed. Salvia is just not my favorite perennial. And that's mainly because it, the salvias that I've had, the first ones in my garden, some of the first perennials I added to my garden was one called May Night, and it flopped terribly. Um, and so I removed it after a couple seasons because I was tired of dealing with it. And it also just, it bloomed that one time, you have to cut them back and they look kind of ratty and then they might bloom again for you. Um, and so I have another one here around the fountain and the tree that I put in this week called Back to the Fuchsia. I've not been terribly impressed with that one either. Um, it's just hasn't bloomed consistently for me, but it is, I just planted it last year. And so we'll give it a little longer uh, to get established before I yank it. But I'm adding one this year called Perfect Perfusion. And so Proven Winners has a line of salvias called the Perfusion line. And Perfect Perfusion is like this very light blue uh, color. And it's supposed to be the best reblooming salvia in their offering. And so we're going to give it a try. It is a it is just a, like this crystal clear light blue, which you can see on the screen, obviously, but it's a very interesting color. And so I think it will pair nicely with the whites and also the corals and the pinks that I'm adding to the garden. So we'll see if this one changes my mind about salvia and we'll move from there. The next plant is one is a scabiosa called Pink Mist. Uh, this one just caught my eye when I was looking at the inventory available, and it's just a really frilly pink uh, scabiosa. Uh, nothing too fancy, although it looks pretty fancy, and so I'm going to be adding a few of those to my garden in the perennial border. And the next perennial is a sedum called Double Martini, and this is from Terra Nova as well, and I purchased it. Uh, it's interesting because it has red stems and these uh, shiny green leaves and then it blooms pink and so it's a really different sedum than I've seen locally uh, and this one I got tiny plugs of and so it's not going to do much uh, for the next couple years probably but I can stick it in a location because it is drought tolerant that I don't run um, drip to and in poor soil and it will just love it and so I'm going to be adding a few of those here and there uh, in those certain locations that I mentioned. The next perennial is a Tiarella called Angel Wings, and Heuchera and Tiarella are really similar. You may have seen plants called uh, Heucherellas, which are a cross between Tiarellas and Heucheras, and they just have really lobed leaves, and they have a beautiful 
profusion of blooms in the spring. Uh, and these are plants that are going to go on the incredible hydrangea hedge as well to replace um, those daylilies that I mentioned. And so they'll provide a nice profusion of blooms in the spring, then we'll cut those back. And then they'll just be an interesting foliage and texture uh, for the remainder of the season. The next perennial is a yarrow, um, which doesn't it doesn't look like a yarrow, but it's called Peter Cottontail. And it has uh, these dainty white blooms that look excellent for cutting. We'll have to see uh, how they do in containers or cut flower arrangements later this year. But it was just a really interesting yarrow and I've never seen anything like it. And so I wanted to pick it up, another one of those white flowers that I'll be adding to combine into arrangements for me. Now let's move on to some roses that I've got. I've already done a video on planting these roses, but I'll go over them again briefly here. Uh, one of them is called Rise Up Lilac Days, which is actually this rose right here. And it is just a beautiful purple color, which I do not have a rose that color in my garden. It is going to go on the fence uh, in the perennial garden as a nice upright uh, plant that can kind of climb on the fence. And so this is a new introduction by Proven Winners this year. Uh, it is a small climber. It can be trained into like a shrub rose, but I'm going to try and use it as a climber and see how it does this year. Uh, Teasing Georgia is the rose that I planted on my moon gate that you saw in a couple videos ago. Just this beautiful, perfect yellow rose uh, that I love so much. And it's a climbing rose. And so I'm really excited about the possibilities and how this is going to look in just a couple years along the moon gate there. The next one is called the Impressionist, which I am putting on the fence arbor. Uh, it is that perfect orange, yellow, coral, pink uh, rose that you could ever imagine. Uh, climbing rose and so it's going to be beautiful. Now we'll get to the shrubs that I have here and so these are different varieties than anything else I've ever planted in my garden. As I mentioned I kind of want to diversify the planting but I also like planting uh, small shrubs as you know uh, based on the 200 that I planted last year um, that can take the place of perennials in the garden, provide interesting texture um, all throughout the season, have an interesting bloom feature or interesting foliage. So the first one is a chokeberry called Groundhug. And Groundhug literally is just a really low to the ground chokeberry. It does spread slowly over time, uh, but it can be maintained a little bit. And it's also one of those plants that, you know, can be a ground cover for me in the garden and I don't necessarily have to mulch under. And so there's Groundhug, and then the next one is called Lowscape Mound. And so it's a similar, it's a chokeberry as well, um, but it is just a little taller than Groundhug is. And both have beautiful spring blooms, um, white, delicate blooms. Got a couple extra Yjulas this year, one called Midnight Sun, which is uh, an incredible introduction that you can use is kind of like a coleus in the garden. And so I'm going to be tucking this one probably into the perennial border. And it's just this interesting foliage color. It's almost blue, red, yellow. Like there's so many colors uh, for, a, for a Yjila that I've never seen. And so it was just, a, just something I had to have. Uh, there's also one called My Monet Sunset. I have some My Monet purple effect in my garden already. I really, really love them. Uh, just the variegated foliage that they have. But this one has interesting uh, foliage that turns kind of like a reddish color. And so it's just another option that provides some interest in the garden in a smaller shrub too. So these don't get very large. Uh, and I'm not buying, typically you buy the Yjilas for the blooms essentially. This one is a foliage plant for me. I picked up a couple extras that were not originally on my list and including a Scentlandia Sweet Spire, which is a new Sweet Spire introduced by Proven Winners and they produce these really fragrant blooms. This one's just budded up and it hasn't bloomed yet, but um, they produce just like, they call them bottle brush plants as well because the blooms look like uh, bottle brushes from your kitchen, uh, but they're just a really interesting, beautifully scented shrub. And this one stays uh, really small, uh, two to three foot tall and wide. And so another small, great shrub that can take the place of a perennial. And I think that is it for my list. Um, it was quite long. 
there are a lot of plants arriving in the next couple weeks. Uh, some will come beginning of May, others will arrive at the end of May. And so my focus over the coming week is to get the perennial bed, weather permitting, uh, prepared for these plants that are arriving. Because some are arriving bare root and I don't want to have to pot those up and buy the potting sole and waste the money um, for, you know, a few weeks. And so we're going to prepare the perennial bed, uh, get these planted as soon as they come in to the extent that I can, uh, and then just watch them grow for the rest of the season. Now, I'm not promising that I won't purchase any more plants this year, uh, but this is probably the bulk of what I'm getting. Um, my garden is getting kind of full. I can only tuck stuff here and there now, especially with this large order that's coming in. And so if I find something that I love and that catches my eye, I might buy it. But for now, this is what I intend to add to my garden this year. So thank you guys for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, these plants that are coming in are just like really magical to me. The colors are great. The color combinations are great. And I think it's going to be a really amazing perennial border uh, in the coming next couple years because all of this stuff I'm getting is going to be rather small and it'll take it a couple years to grow on. But I'm hoping um, this first year will also provide a lot of interest for me. So thank you guys for following along and remember in a world full of hate, be a light. Take care everyone. Bye.